Thanks, Commish. Um, very excited to be here today for a variety of reasons, uh, but uh, first and foremost, it kind of comes full circle for me um, to come back in here to Lucas Oil. Uh, the last time I was in this building was my last uh, game as a head coach in this conference. Uh, we played Nebraska to open up the season this year against Nebraska as a, a completion of a of a journey that uh, has brought me to where we are, but but to be at the University of Illinois now um, as an Illinois born, um, played high school football in the state, uh, to come back to this conference as a former player, former assistant coach, former defensive coordinator, uh, former head coach in this league, especially in this Big Ten West, uh, it really has come full circle. So I couldn't be more excited to unite with a fan base that I think is excited to not only see where we can go, but where we can sustain this. Um, uh, you know, when I first had a conversation with Josh uh, about coming to the University of Illinois, the thing he kept harping and remaining and, and, and staying on to this day we're at right now is just uh, the overall commitment to not only get Illinois where we want to be, but to get Illinois to stay where we want to be. All right. And in 2021, to have a program sitting in a position to be discovered for the long term is a very exciting time. Um, excited to be back here today. I recognize a lot of familiar faces. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've seen some of you. So. To be back and rekindle relationships with the media, uh, build new ones, is an awesome, awesome time. Couldn't be more excited uh, for this opportunity to be with you here today. A little bit about what's been going on in Champaign. Uh, unfortunately, we had the passing uh, of Bobby Roundtree last week. Um, obviously, a player that was there before I was there. Uh, but as soon as I took the job, uh, until I received the news last week of his passing, uh, just been overly impressed with uh, who he is, what he represented, the lives he touched in a short amount of time. Uh, and I know that you'll be around our players later today. Uh, it was immediately uh, well known to me how much of an impact he had on our team. Uh, obviously, when he was a player, a great player, uh, but also during his uh, uh, time of uh, uh, recovery and, and, and the way he fought and the way he battled um, up until his passing last week is, is truly special. So uh, we're with him and his family uh, as they go through a very, very difficult time. Uh, the three players that I brought with me today are just a small representation of what we have in Champaign. Um, Coach Smith, Lovey, uh, uh, Lovey did a, a really nice job. I can't talk about anything that happened before I got here, but I give him a lot of credit for, A, these three young men that are here with me today, and as well as a lot of young men that are in Champaign that represent us on, on a daily basis. Uh, we all want to win games. We all want to do certain things, but um, the character, the vi virtue, the the um, uh, type of people he brought to our campus um, is really special. And these three players today represent that. Vidarian Lowe, uh, who's also been selected by the conference to represent us uh, 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 as an entire conference and, and to be the speaker. Uh, we'll normally be at a luncheon, but we'll do it uh, uh, virtually this year, or at least a, 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 a recording of it. Um, there hasn't been a player from the University of Illinois in 15 years to be selected in that role. And it's a lot more than just the football player he is, it's the person he is. Uh, his personal life, to be married with a couple kids, uh, to have the uh, 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 guardianship of his of his young brother. Um, just just to truly, since I walked in the building, have never been more impressed with a player in such a short amount of time. Um, Doug Kramer, who's from Chicago, uh, uh, a guy that uh, came back for a, a sixth year and a guy that uh, I'm excited with um, um, uh, to be a guy that uh, represents us. He also will handle our commands, a center, uh, great demeanor, great attitude. Just an awesome, awesome kid to be around. And then uh, Owen Carney, our uh, outside linebacker who, who came back as well, actually entered the transfer portal right before I, I, I was there um, or during my time there. We continue to have conversations and to kind of re-recruit him. There's probably not a player in our program that I've had more individual time contact meetings with uh, to get to where we are today. So those three guys are the representation of a, a, a super senior class of 22 players, right? We lead the nation in the number of super seniors back at 22. We have 18 uh, seniors that are coming back, which would be their normal senior year, whether they come back for an additional year because of COVID is going to be determined in the future. But that's, that's 40 seniors in our program right now who are very hungry, uh, very excited about the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, attitude they've shown, about the demeanor they brought, the way they've accepted our coaches, the way they brought into what we've been asking them to do. Uh, not so much just in our time in the football facility at the Smith Center, uh, but what we ask them to do in their personal lives, the way that they walk their walk uh, and handle their routine on a daily basis has been pretty impressive. Um, uh, with that being said, I think the part that is exciting for me especially is you learn so many things in life as you go through it that you had no idea you were going to learn um, that day, right? So uh, to be in this, this conference, to be in this role is truly a, uh, uh, a moment in my lifetime that uh, means everything to me. Um, I'm, now married with a 
couple small children and to, to have a, a home in Champaign that we're building, um, literally. To grow my uh, family, to have our children be raised in Champaign is something I'm very, very excited about uh, and looking forward to building uh, something there that lasts forever. So um, uh, we open up the game, uh, open up the college football season. What a great opportunity. It was going to be in Ireland. Of course, everybody wanted to go to Ireland, especially our kicker, uh, James McCourt, uh, one of our dynamic duo of kickers. We call the lads, one's from Australia and one's from Ireland. We were going to... Uh, uh, kick off the football season over there, but uh, because of COVID, that got canceled and bring it full circle back into Champaign uh, to have it kick off against Nebraska, a team that we have great respect for. We've known Scott for a long time, uh, a, a, a team that uh, you know brought a national championship to the Big Ten when they came into it, and now the opportunity to open up the college football season at noon, literally as the first college football kickoff of the year, is truly an exceptional opportunity. So uh, with that, open it up for some questions. and. Um, Look to be enlightened. Thank you, Coach. And just a reminder for everybody, we have a very wide footprint. So I ask you to please raise your hand up nice and high. Keep it up. And when you ask your question, if you can stand, please stand. We're going to go to the far right. Hand up uh, all the way on the end, Coach. Okay. Paul M. Banks, thesportsbank.net. Um, so much is made in this conference of the ground and pound, running game, power game. Obviously, the two schools in the conference that you've been affiliated with in the past. But how do you assess the offensive skill position, guys, the finesse game? When you look at what Illinois has uh, at wide receiver and DB, like, where do you see kind of the strengths and weaknesses there? Absolutely. Uh, very excited. You know, again, um, walking into a situation like you did during transition, you really don't know what. I'd been out of college football for three years. Uh, as soon as Josh called, I began to research the roster, identify players, uh, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, really, I think one of the moments that, that I, I really go back to is that first opportunity to watch the team play at Penn State, uh, the last game of the year. And then to come back and meet with the team the next year, I offered an opportunity for everybody in that room to come back. I didn't look at a stitch of film. I didn't care if they were a great player uh, or, or a player that was last on the depth chart. I wanted them to know that I was the newest family, in, family member in that room. And uh, um, from this point forward, we're going to walk this walk together. Offensively, you know, you had a, a variety of different quarterbacks, kind of some different skill sets uh, in the offense they'd run previously. I brought in Tony Peterson, our offensive coordinator, for a reason. I'd never worked with him, right? So I knew everybody would gravitate to my past experiences. Uh, what we've really tried to concentrate on is building the Illinois offense. And uh, since I've taken over, there's been some transition, obviously, in the quarterback room with uh, BP. Brandon Peters uh, uh, getting the majority of the workload during the spring with Isaiah Williams. Isaiah switched to wide receiver after the conclusion of spring ball. Uh, it's been a great asset for us. Um, not only is he a, a good football player, I think he's an exceptional person, great leadership qualities. Uh, he's lightning in a bottle, just very, very active, natural receiver. So I think just that simple transition right there uh, made us better at the wide receiver position by transition from the quarterback. Also added a grad transfer or a, a transfer from Rutgers with Art Sikowski, uh, who's been a player in this conference already, a guy that we're excited to be part of the program, uh, Matt Robinson. So quarterbacks feel really good about four or five of our, our running backs that uh, I'm excited to see. We have 15 practices with them in the spring, but uh, this type of offense that we're running and the, and the variety that we can bring, I think they'll fit into that well. have a couple tight ends that I feel are, are – uh, um, you know, very, very good Big Ten type players that it could uh, transition to possibly something later in their life in the NFL. Um, I've been blessed uh, uh, with two edge uh, tackles in Vidarian Lowe and Palcho that uh, have started, I believe, over 30 games each apiece uh, and many more. And uh, to have two guys like that with Doug Kramer in the middle and a couple guys fighting it out uh, at the guard position, I'm, I'm really excited where our offense is. We'll go to the back at 1 o'clock, Coach. Hi, Coach. Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press. As a defensive coach with the, the limiting of, of contact practices and, and fully padded practices, particularly when you're starting a new program and taking over a new program, how, how does that work and how do you feel that, that those changes are the, for safety versus the quality of football that is put on the field? Great, great question, Bruce. So first, you know, anything that involves player safety as a coach, I couldn't be more excited for, right? Anything that allows us, you know, I, I grew up playing in this league, um, uh, uh, you know, obviously coached in it for a long time. And I think the evolution that we've naturally taken as coaches, as a, as a, as a, a college football world with the NCAA, uh, with the uh, um, backing of our doctors and the medical people have made us better as coaches, right? Like um, I can sit here and, 
you know, take a stance or it doesn't do any good, right? I always say, and I talk to Josh on a daily basis, just tell me the rules and let me play, right? Just give me the rules and we can make an adjustment. I think one of the things uh, the last three years being in the NFL, the because of the NFLPA, they really um, take a proactive approach to player safety because guys are making livelihoods off of being able to play, correct? So it really enlightened my eyes about the way to practice efficiently um, from things like tackling, pass rush, um, uh, one-on-ones, uh, different things that maybe were higher risk to, put to player safety, and then also the ability to practice efficiently without full pads, right, to, to not actually have to go out there and take people to the ground, to learn how to play on your feet. One of the things that jumped out to me when I used to visit NFL teams as a college coach is, is how much the players and the coaches demand players to play on their feet. The game is played while you're playing on your feet, right? So to get players to understand that and preach it, um, I'm sure if you ask our three guys here today how many times I, I talk about staying up, uh, it's, it's just overwhelmingly positive. So uh, I think where we're at as, a, as an organization is where we're at. And, and uh, to accept it and move forward, we have nine padded practices. The way I structured our first four weeks before we played Nebraska was actually difficult to even get that ninth padded practice in the way I wanted to do it. So I think it's more than enough if you're doing things the correct way. We have time for two more. We'll go uh, on the left, fourth row, and then we'll end over here. Hi, Coach. Alec Bussey, Rivals.com. You know, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned you last time you were in this building was after you won a Big Ten championship. You had a lot of success in this conference. What kind of details go into you having that same success at Illinois as you did at your previous institution? Alec, great question. Um, you know, I think it's a combination of I stand here now as a 51-year-old head coach versus the 36-year-old head coach I was 15 years ago, right? I've learned things through, through success, but I've also learned things through failure. And to be aware and cognizant of that uh, and be, aware, be uh, uh, um, very diligent in our daily approach about how we uh, uh, maximize our strengths, minimize our weaknesses. But first, you have to partnership with the right people, right? Um, at my previous institutions, I was with some, some great people that made those opportunities be special. And now to walk hand in hand with Josh, you know, a guy that played here at the University of Illinois, had a degree from here, and now leads our entire athletic department. That's critical, right, to, to, to have a partnership with the people that are going to support you. Um, I think the other two big components, right, is recruiting the state of Illinois. Um, recruiting any time I've seen a great organization, right, um, uh, both in football and in life, right, or in marriages or in, in uh, 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 business platforms, you have to represent and understand the environment you're in, right? And for us to be successful at Illinois, we need to be supported by the people that make Illinois possible. So fans, alumni, donors, administration, uh, general university, uh, all those things are very, very important uh, to make Illinois be great for a long time. And we'll end in the middle on your right. Hi, Coach. This is Leah with the Cedar Rapids Gazette. I was just wondering what your approach is to in-state recruiting and how you're hoping to um, kind of reclaim the state, especially since you compete with Iowa a lot and you have a Tiger Hawk tattoo. Yeah. Um, I got a Tiger Hawk tattoo when I was 19. It was a great idea then. Uh, not so much now. Uh, but I, I think it's important to realize that that is a big part of where I am today, right? I always tell our players, um, we all come from different parts of the country. We all part, come from different homes, different backgrounds, different religions, different uh, uh, communities. The first is to know that you're here because of that, right? That made you who you are today. Um, for us to be successful in Illinois, I have to recruit in the state, but we also, the states that border us, right? So, you know, they come into our state, so we can go into theirs as well. So we'll, we'll cross the border and go out and recruit because a lot of times those similarities are very, very, um, 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 a very real than, than people think, right? Like a kid that grows up in downstate Illinois is very similar to a kid that grows up in the middle of Iowa, the kid that grows up in the middle of Wisconsin, the kid that grows up in the middle of Ohio. Um, all those things uh, uh, transcend to what we think we can bring here, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. Um, you know, recruiting is, is, is something that people, I remember when I left uh, 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 the University of Iowa, went to Kansas State and, and was involved in recruiting battles. That's when things get very personal, right? It's easy on Saturdays. Um, Saturdays, you're just 11 guys competing on the field at a time. Uh, but recruiting is personal if you're doing it the right way. And, and um, to be able to have a foothold and, and to continue to build that uh, with our in-state players, but also branch it out and find Illinois-type players in other states, that's what it's all about. Coach, thank you. Have thank a great you. season. ILL.